The difference of a few minutes can have a profound impact on the lives of people. And that's why when faced with any emergency or rescue situation, you need a ship you can depend upon to get you where you need to be. Regardless of the location or the challenge you face, the Red delivers the performance and reliability you need to control any rescue situation quickly, with authority and confidence. Hey guys, it's Fist25 back with another ship review. This time it's going to be the Cutlass Red and the Cutlass Blue. But first up, the Cutlass Red. Let's go ahead and get the intro out of the way. Roll it. All right, everybody, welcome back to another review here at Fist and Jawa Save the Universe. Today we're gonna we're, we're over here at Crew L1 and we're gonna talk about the Drake Cutlass Red here. Uh, the Drake Cutlass Red is an emergency response and support ship with a comprehensive medical bay, long range radar capabilities, and a suite of defen defensive options. More than just a top flight emergency responder, the Cutlass Red is a highly regarded support vessel for hazardous combat, recon, and exploration. With the ability to revive fallen squad mates and a full onboard auto dock, a single visit to the med bay will ensure that you will always be pulled back from the brink of death. All right, so before I get towed out of here, let's uh, let's let's at least uh, go ahead and get on the ship, and uh, we'll take off, and uh, then we'll do a little bit of a tour here. So there's there technically is three ways to enter, but really it's just entering from the back here uh, through the main ramp. We're going to go ahead and close that door, and it's very dark in here because I don't have power turned on. Um, this is kind of the storage area of the ship. Uh, we're gonna we have to physically open these doors here are two med bays we'll go over those more in a minute and uh, we're gonna head into the habitation area and into the cockpit and hop into the front pilot seat all right let's start this baby out and we'll just take off slow here All right, systems are fired up. Let's do an external view here. And we're just gonna go, this is a VTOL ship like all Cutlasses. So we're just gonna go ahead and lift off. And you can see the, the retros on top of the engines and then the main engines down here on the bottom as we gain some, some altitude. Well, I guess in space, is, is it really altitude? We gain some distance from the station. We're gonna go ahead and raise up the landing gear. All right, so the gear is stowed away and then we're gonna go ahead and hit K and we are gonna rotate our engines into the forward position. Okay. Just gonna head out this way. Nice, leisurely, very kind of slow pace here. We'll actually go down and go up just a bit. So I wanna get some of this, uh, some of the station in the background here. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, I guess let's hop off the cockpit here. We'll do an internal ship tour first. Then we'll get, and we'll, we'll do the, the cockpit area, and then we'll do the exterior tour of the ship. Okay, so let's start where we would normally start in, open door, there we go, in uh, the storage area. So. In the storage area where you can like just barely fit like a cyclone in here I, I don't remember if you can fit a rock it would be it would be tough um, but there is an open closed door here there's also an open close here um, we can go ahead and open this while we're floating through space we have a nice view of crew out one right there I hope we don't run into an asteroid while we are cruising along We'll pray to the uh, the CIG gods that we don't. 
Um, but anyway, there's nothing really functional in here except the door. So it's just really a storage area. Great place to put boxes, store a vehicle, stuff like that. Uh, so you can use the ship to do multiple missions. Um, coming into the medical area and uh, really habitation. Um, you see that there's two uh, full med beds here. And I mean, you can just regularly sit. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, lie down on the bed. And if you're currently injured, you can actually uh, have the bed. Well, I'm going to set my preferred ICU here. You see it flash green, meaning if I die, I will spawn here. But you can uh, actually do a scan. I just thought it was maybe you have to be injured for it to actually work. Uh, but you can't do a thing where it actually heals you. It's uh, kind of weird. But it will actually, the auto dock will actually heal you. Um, and maybe that, maybe that is the way to do it. But there is also another way to set your spawn point. Uh, and that's to come over here to this red tablet next to the emergency supplies. Um, and right here, I could, uh, because I've already set my spawn point, my options are clear as preferred ICU and clear all ICU settings. So obviously other people can set their spawn point to your ship as well. Um, so you could clear them out with clear all, or you could just uh, clear yourself for as clear as preferred ICU. So if I go ahead and do that, it flashes red saying, hey, you know, if you die, you're not going to spawn here anymore. I can reset as my preferred ICU. It'll flash green. Um, so, yeah, that's how that works. Um, over here is an identical med bed. Um, same type of functionality here. Uh, and there's, you know, it's nice to have two. Um, up here are the uh, two bunks. Uh, this is a two-person ship, uh, and you can sleep and log off on this ship. A lot of functionality here. And then there are actually two docking collars. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to open this guy. Or if I want to watch my cutlass red fly away. Okay, we're going to have to cut here. Uh, <laughs> oh, do yourself real quick. Maybe I can respawn back on the Cutlass. Usually if it's not too far away, uh, you can go ahead and respawn on it. Hey, sometimes that happens. You end up clipping through different things. Let's see what happens. Oh, what do you know? I'm right back on the Cutty. So I'm not even going to edit that out, guys. Hey, that works. That is a, a method of playing, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> So that works. So, hey, I don't need to eat or drink anything for a little while uh, because I just got spawned back in. So, yay me. All right. So, uh, note to self, don't do that. Um, but you can actually get in there and open up that, that door, that airlock door, and leave through it. Getting back in, not going to happen. Um, but then we have the option to seal the airlock. Now, if it was on its side or something and you are able to get over by the airlock, you, you definitely could get back in. Uh, it's the same exact setup over here um, for the airlock, and we're, but we're going to go ahead and seal that. And then this is our door to our front area. Sometimes a little bit slow. So over here, uh, we also have two more beds. So hey, I know it's a two-person ship, but uh, maybe those other beds are just for other people for sick bay, basically. I guess this these beds are for the captain and uh, the co-pilot slash uh, be, uh, light operator. Um, these are places where you could store your weapons. Uh, let's go ahead and try that. So I pull out my gun. I can place it here. And what do you know? My C-54 is right there. And I can go ahead and equip that. And now I got my gun back. And I will go ahead and stow that away. So there are some guns and weapons racks. Um, I don't think we actually really have any type of storage or component access over here. I don't believe so. None of these open or anything like that. Um, in here, you do have a uh, a sink and a drain and, you know, the infamous toilet here. Uh, it does have some kind of a almost like a larger shower. And then, of course, uh, the toilet seat. Um, so you can, you know, you can you can take selfies. Uh, you can actually there's no door. Right. So um I guess you're gonna, you know, the, the pilot turns around, they can they can kind of see you, uh, like a little bit at least. I guess when you hit F4, you're getting an external of the ship instead of like a selfie view. But, you know, 
Uh, it is what it is. Up here looks like a coat rack where you could possibly store some kind of armor or something like that. And then up towards the front of the ship is the uh, the co-pilot seat, um, which uh, it says co-pilot. Let's go ahead and enter that. And you notice on all of the Cutlass ships, you actually sit higher than the pilot. And we will go ahead and turn this guy on. And there's there's our Drake welcome song here. Now, I believe this has a like a remote turret thing, but it's just the light. Yeah, enter remote turret. So on the top of the ship, you can see there's kind of a spotlight, right? Um, and what it is is so you can can then uh, like highlight things on the ground or like as a search and rescue type of thing. Um, so you can you can definitely do that with this ship, and you can look off to the side, you can look forward. Uh, so that's that's pretty neat, and we haven't even really turned the lights on yet. Um, so to get out, I will just hold down F. I believe there's just one remote turret. There's one on the top. There is not one on the bottom. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it other than standard like co-pilot functions. Um, so we'll go ahead and exit. And we will hop into the pilot seat. I don't know why I didn't just go forward. I just have a thing about entering from the left. I'm not an ambi turn. It's a reference to Zoolander, if you haven't seen that. Okay, so from the pilot seat here, um, let's uh, let's head back towards the station. Let's maybe get a little a little cruise by. I mean, we were not going fast at all. We're going like six meters a second, but uh, yeah, we'll get this station a good old flyby again. Okay, so let's look around the cockpit here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six multi-function displays. Um, as far as our glass goes, pretty darn good views here. We even have a uh, kind of a forward down view. Um, so we can see not only where we're landing, but we can see other targets down there. Very helpful for a Cutlass Red medical type of ship. Um, so the strut design is actually pretty darn good on a cutlass. We also have a 2D radar in the front, so I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing at, at some point, and our warning display. Uh, we can see this button down here is our power button. Um, over here, engine on, engine off, spool, quantum drive. Um, what other buttons? Drake doesn't have a lot. Open exterior, press to unlock. Um... We got our stick there and exit. So that's pretty much it. Uh, not a whole lot of bells and whistles with the uh, the Drake ships. I think we've lost some of our light. Let's turn into what we can see here. It just doesn't like us here in this cloud. That's that's part of the downside, I guess, of. Uh, of doing stuff out here at Crew L1. We did get a little bit of light earlier, kind of down this way, so that's fine. This is the default paint scheme for the Cutlass Black. I do like to use the new coal fire paint on it because it's blacks and reds, and I think it looks pretty darn awesome. Uh, let's give the throttles a little bit of gas. You can see that they, they do, in fact, light up a little bit. I really love that from the Cutlass. Here's the afterburner right there. So I think that's a really, a really cool look. Um, I do really like the paint scheme on here, the red and the white. Of course, it's rescue stuff, so uh, it, it looks great. This ship overall, all the ships in this line look fantastic. You can see there's our dock or our, our rescue ports, our docking ports. Um, and you can see our searchlight is actually on because power's on. But uh, in there, you can actually see like the searchlight right there there is the the searchlight itself um some of the other markings on the cutting red uh just rescue um dc let's say dcr2 uh just a bunch of drake type of markings rescue markings and then the standard cutlass uh look here now on this ship i actually have uh, Gatlings and lasers equipped because sometimes I actually get into fights with this thing and we're gonna get into a fight in a little bit um, So that is the standard look from the outside. Let's go ahead and turn on the rescue lights by hitting L As you can see it lights up like an ambulance would light up um, 
all the reds, the siren, there's no siren, the, all the all the flashing lights, there's the white lights, they're kind of flashing, and it kind of makes your presence known here. Let's uh, see if we can get a little bit of light on the bottom. So there we go, DCR2, it does say that. I don't know what that stands for. I may have to look that up. Uh, but lots of lots of like aluminum colors, silver grays, uh, lots of looks like rust and some weathering effects on this guy, even though I just spawned it from a fresh claim. Um, but yeah, this man, this, this ship looks great. It feels great. It flies just like any other cutty. So let's go to SCM speed here really quick up to SCM. Uh, that's 182 meters a second. Let's see if we can head back towards the station. Um, and we, there it is. It might be upside down. Um, let's go ahead and throttle up to full throttle. As you can see, that bar it is rising pretty darn fast to get us to get us where we need to go. Um, okay, we're passing a thousand, passing eleven hundred, and settling in right here about. 1197, 1198-ish for our maximum speed on the Cutlass Red. I don't remember if that's the maximum speed for all the Cutlasses. We'll, we'll basically just have to look at that as we uh, as we get there. So let's head back to SCM. Yeah, guys, so that is the Cutlass Red. Let me give you some more stats here uh, while we are still floating around out here in space a little bit. I'll... Uh, I'll do a little bit uh, of a slow pass view here. Um, so the Cutlass Red, it is a search and rescue medium sized ship. Uh, it has a crew of one to two. It has a cargo capacity of 12 standard cargo units. Um, it was introduced as flight ready at Alpha 3.8. So it's actually a pretty recent ship. Um, you can pick this ship up for 1,810,500 Alpha UEC. Uh, you can rent it for 36,210 Alpha UEC or 18,105 rec per day. The claim time on the ship is about 18 minutes, 54 seconds. Expedite time is 3 minutes, 9 seconds. And the expedite fee is 4,725 Alpha UEC. Um, as far as pledges go, this ship is always available. This, you can just buy the ship whenever you want. It's always available. I think... CIG has kind of just known that the Cutlass series are fairly starter ships here. So Cutlass Red, Cutlass, I think the Cutlass Blue, and the the uh, the cut, definitely the Cutlass Black you can buy at any time. Um, the, I think the Cutlass Blue is time-limited sales, uh, but we'll get into that when we start talking about the Cutty Blue. Um, but you can buy the ship at any time for 135 US dollars. Uh, it originally was 120, so not that much of a markup. Uh, specs, if you really want to look at them, 36 meters long, 26 meters at the beam, 14 meters tall. Um, we already got our speeds and it weighs 226,000 kilograms. And uh, as far as lore goes, the ship was introduced into the verse in 2845, uh, which was about 106 years ago from current time of 2951. Uh, this ship, as I said, it's a medium ship, so it does sport size two components. Um, so it'll, it'll have, it has four size three hard points for weapons. It does not have any hard points for missiles. It is a search and rescue ship and a, a medical ship. Um, so it is for support gameplay, uh, but it does support size two, one size two shield, one size two power plant, two size two coolers and a size two quantum drive, which is super nice because that's it. it it's significantly faster flying around the verse in a size two quantum drive. Um, the features we already kind of went over. It has a medical bay. Um, it has secure side airlocks. It has, uh, I guess, a nav E7 echo scanner, long range radar capabilities to enhance search and rescue operations. And it has a sure grip tractor mount, a rear oriented tractor mount to add valuable assistance for recovery and retrieval. I did not know that. And I don't have any idea where those controls would be. I guess that'll be a rework at some point. Um, but that's that's really cool. We're going to get into more about the Cutlass Red and the Cutlass Blue when we do the brochure. There is a single brochure and we'll, we'll get into more of those details there. We'll, we'll go over uh, some of the um, actually, you know what? As far as paints go, 
Um, the video I'm going to do after this is just on the Cuddy Black. So I'm going to do all the paints on the Cuddy Black because I got to try to get a hold of uh, one of my friends here and see if I can borrow their besting show of uh, 2949. I think it's the one with the purple because um, I, I do have the 2950 besting show paint. So, yeah, so guys, so <clears throat> that is a Cutlass Red. Um, I guess the only thing left to do with this guy, first person wise, before we talk about loadout, is uh, let's go take a dogfight in a little bit, see how it handles in first person, and then we'll uh, we'll go over the loadout, and then we'll do the uh, Cutlass Blue. Uh, we'll do the Cutlass Blue first person shooting, you know, around the cockpit there. Then we'll do uh, the loadout for the Cutty Blue. We'll do the brochure for both aircraft. Then we will do. Uh, I'm not going to, there's no real commercial for these guys. Uh, there is one for the Cutlass Blue. So we'll show the Cutlass Blue commercial and then we'll go into the third person dogfighting. And uh, thank you guys so far for watching. And if you haven't already, please, uh, if I've earned your like at the end of the video, please don't hesitate to hit that little red subscribe button under the video. Jawa and I could sure use your help. And I hope you're enjoying the content so far. And there is definitely more to come. All right, folks, here we go. Enemy is roughly oh, less than 8,000 out. I'm gonna target him. Remember, I got size threes on here. They are fixed instead of gimbaled like at the default loadout. There we go. Attrition threes and GT220s for this Anvil Valkyrie. Apparently I'm an a-hole, is what he called me. No missiles here, guys, so... We'll get a little bit of missiles on the, uh, the Cutty Blue, though, so... Boom! There he goes. Egil Bajan. You are dead. That was uh, HRT, guys. Um, high risk target mission. And uh, so there you go. So easily shows that the Cuddy Red can handle first person combat without an issue and uh, do very well at it if it, if it has to. Um, of course, you know, I have upgraded weapons and stuff on here. It's, it's definitely not meant to be a combat ship. Um, I would not advise uh, player versus player in a cutting red and um but you know player versus environment uh it's it's fine um oh well it looks like his friends showed up it looks like we're gonna get a little more footage here so we got a freelancer miss still pretty far out and his other buddy is there and they are shooting. So we do have a size two shield on here, just to keep that in mind. Um, we gotta be careful of these asteroids. We're on the dark side of a uh, of, of these asteroids, so we don't have like any sunlight. And the reason I was able to get that freelancer miss so quick is because I was constantly shooting in the same area, so I took down that shield face. I think things might be a little different in three fourteen. Because we're going to go, oh, there, that saber went quick. Um, we're going to get a bubble shield, a single shield. So it'll be a little more, you know, one shield faced. Uh, or Sorry, it'll just be like one shield as a bubble around the ship. And it'll take, you know, more impact instead of having shield faces. Except, I think, for larger ships. So anyway, uh, Cuddy Red did really good here took out all these guys uh it can definitely handle itself in first person combat and i did all of that with the lights on <laughs> just to show you there's a great shot of crusader and the cutting right i think this will be uh my i'm gonna take a screenshot of that one that was a good one um this might be the cover here maybe this one with the cutting blue and uh Let's head on over to the loadout and then we'll get into the Cuddy Blue guys. Thanks for watching so far and stay tuned for more coverage on the Cutlass.
All right, folks, here we go with the Cutlass Red uh, loadout here on Urkel.Games, the DPS calculator live. As you can see uh, over here, the stats, the rolls, medical, it's multi-role uh, career, ship sizes, three whole hit points, 19,320. That's pretty good. That's actually more than like a Hornet would be. Um, the speed 183, top speed 1198, the pitch 50 degrees a second, the uh, 45, the roll 95. Not horrible, but still pretty sluggish. Cargo grid 12 SEUs, 1.8 million at the New Deal shipyard in Lorville. Here is the stock loadout, guys. Okay, let's look here at uh, DPS first. We're at 1334 with 269 alpha. I don't like having the distortions on here. The badgers, I'm, I'm fine with, but notice everything is gimbaled. So um, if you want to keep gimbaled, keep gimbaled. Um, I like to go with fixed size threes. And um, my typical loadout here, a couple of attrition threes. Um, because if I'm going to get in a fight, I'm probably going to be pretty close. It is still a pretty quick ship. And then I go with Mantis GT220s. Giving us a DPS of 2193 with a alpha damage of 313 when everything's heated up. So pretty good on that. Um, let's head over to shields. Everything is size two here. It comes with industrial grade C for everything from the quantum drive all the way to the shields. Um, we're going to change that. We're going to put on, uh, you could do an FR 76, but uh, I think overall, because you only have one shield slot, you go with the rampart. Um, I know it's the slowest recharge because it's industrial, but it has the highest hit point total, uh, 10,000 more, 11,000 more than the FR-76. Uh, and I think, oh, whoops, not 11,000, uh, 8,000 more. And I think it's worth it. Um, it still charges okay. Uh, so now we have a, a shield hit point of 32,000, and it charges in 189 seconds. So three minutes for, for a full charge compared to an FR-76, which would still take um, over a minute. So, I mean, kind of pick your poison here. If you can afford it, put the Super on on there, the size 2 from the Prowler. Um, that's that's probably the best shield. But if you can't, I would still go with the Rampart. Power plants. Um, I get rid of that Diligence Industrial Grade C and throw a JS-400 on there. I think everybody can agree that is the, the hot standard there. And the coolers, get rid of these industrial grade C coolers and go with the snow packs. I mean, you don't have to upgrade the cool cores. Um, the snow pack only gives you 800 more cooling, but uh, you know, if you can afford it, then go with that. As far as the quantum drive goes, I highly recommend any of the military drives. The XL1 being the fastest, the Jaeger or the Crossfield. Uh, I would definitely get rid of the, what's on their stock. Um, Recommend the XL1 if you can afford it, but then the Jaeger and the Crossfield are fine drives. They're very fast. Um, so here we go. This is my full loadout for the Cuddy Red. Uh, it's, it's pretty typical for what I have, but if you look at power, we're under half. The cooling, I mean, we have a ton of room. There's like no nothing here that needs to be cooled, but it does pump out a ton of EM at 60,000 and a ton of IR. So you are not gonna be stealthy at all. So just know that going in, uh, that's not what the ship is for. It's not made to be stealthy or anything. Um, and there you go, guys. That is the loadout for the Drake Cutlass Red. And uh, we'll see you on the next part of the video. Well, all right, folks, here we are at Galette Family Farms on Selen. And I have here for you the Drake Cutlass Blue. Your uh, oh, camera's going crazy. Uh, the Drake Cutlass Blue here uh, landed here. Uh, we were chasing out a bounty a little bit earlier. No, seriously, we're here to do a ship tour. But uh, some things are worth fighting for, plain and simple. When these moments come, you need to know that whatever challenges you face, you'll be able to pass the test with guts, grit, and grace under pressure. And a ship that can handle whatever you throw at it. That, my friends, is the Drake Cutlass Blue. Uh, let's take a quick walk around the outside. The Drake AS-1 Cutlass Blue is the go-to patrol ship for militia and law enforcement, featuring an onboard quantum dampener, a versatile weapons package, and a bank of prisoner containment systems. The Cutlass Blue is built to protect citizens and suppress dangerous outlaws. And uh, that, that makes a whole lot of sense, right? It, it is 
for all intents and purposes, the police ship, the law enforcement ship, even though the advocacy, the advocacy does not use the Drake Cutlass Blue. They, the UE does not like Drake to begin with. Um, so maybe this is more geared towards a uh, regular old civilian type of law enforcement. As you can see, I'm landing a little crooked here too. Where my left side is up more than my right. So I hope it doesn't mess anything up. Um, as we look at the front of the ship, it looks, you know what it reminds me of is it reminds me of a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica. Um, at least in the front there, which is awesome because I love that show. And if you haven't seen the remake, you know what I'm oh, and the, the, the weather kind of sun just changed dramatically. It's weird how that works on, uh, on selling here. A great shot of the Cutlass Blue and the Crusader in the background as well. So, uh, but let's take a look at the front here. This is definitely where the, the pilot sits. Um, looks like any other Cutlass series. Uh, up here I have I have uh, two sets of guns. I have Attrition 3s uh, mounted on the bottom of this bounty hunting ship. Uh, there looks like to be some kind of uh, antenna. And then I don't know if those are retro thrusters uh, over there this, above the weapons or, or if that's the hydrogen intake. Uh, I'm not sure. Or, but I think the, uh, the missiles come out of this tube light structure uh, up here under this antenna. I believe that's where the missiles come out of. And this ship does have quite a few missiles. I actually loaded it up with uh, size threes, uh, where it generally comes with a bunch of size twos. Um, as we walk around the starboard side of the ship, we can see that the ship is symmetrical, so it's identical on both sides. You can see it has that nice bubble type of profile uh, from the side again. It looks just like, uh, like a silo. Um, as with all cutlasses, it has this kind of forward strut thing attached to like a forward wing. Right, so there's there's kind of an aft wing and a forward wing, and in the middle of the fuselage with a docking collar. Um, but this, it looks, it, I don't know, it's strange. This thing uh, will break off in combat uh, on the left or the right side. It'll break off with too hard of a landing sometimes. And uh, then at that point, you will also lose the guns that are attached to it. Um, making our way past the throttle body, you can see up top there, there is a turret. Um, while I have a distortion, uh, that white gun right there, uh, which I'm sorry, you won't lose the the top guns on the, the Cutlass Blue, but you would lose the bottom guns. And my ship's moving for uh, no reason at all, apparently. Uh, it just, the engines are off, so maybe that's an issue, but may, I don't even hear the wind or anything, so that's very odd. Anyway, those are distortion repeaters, size threes. They're fixed. Um, and then on the top in a turret is actually a GT2 tens, I believe, or 215s. I can't remember if they're size one or, or two, but those are my ballistics. But I need to have a second person in the ship to get those to work. Um, coming around the rest of the starboard side of the ship is the magnificent engines of the Drake Cutlass series. I mean, these engines are so well modeled. And the plumbing and everything that goes on it looks much like a modern type of engine, but futuristic. You know, it's got some armor plating around it. I love the way the fire works on it. Um, the markings on it just from that no step on the top of the exhaust nozzle. That's, you know, those little details are awesome. Um, love these ships. The whole Cutlass series here are just amazing ships. Uh, rounding our way up to the back, we have this kind of uh, this thing sticking out in the front here. Um, not 100 percent sure what 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 that is, but uh, it's just above the door, which is the main entrance hatch. And uh, we will come around the starboard side here, um, if I can orientate myself, and uh, kind of cut through. There we go. We get real close to the engine there. Lots of detail on that on that engine. And then you see the starboard side is just the same. It does have a triangular landing gear setup. So with that, before I probably end up freezing to death or some selling storm comes by, let's uh, let's go ahead and hit the back of this ship. I left power on, so there there are lights here. 
get through the main entrance of the ship and uh, let's get on here before the door breaks. These doors are notorious for actually breaking and not being able to close. So it's important to, you know, get that door up and down as fast as possible. So just like the Cuddy Blue, this ship uh, has a cargo capacity back here of 12 SCU and it'll fit a small rover um, like a Cyclone. It'll be a tight fit, but you could easily put cargo in here. You could put boxes in here. So this ship is, in fact, multi-role and it is multi-crew, but it can be soloed pretty darn easily. Um, I see some stuff here for component housing, although none of this stuff actually does anything um, except for the open and close of the door panel. Um, so, yeah, so let's uh, and I guess this is an airlock here, so I don't know if we're pressurized back here or not. I would imagine we are, but let's go ahead and open the airlock door and you can see different than the Cuddy Red, right? The Cuddy Red has two uh, beds over here where this ship has uh, prisoner pods is what they are. Um, so when you're out bounty hunting, um, you're going to be able to, I guess, these are basically jail cells, jail pods, and you'll be able to store prisoners in here. I don't see where it opens or if it does open. I don't really mess with these because this type of gameplay is not in the game right now. So uh, I think that's why most people fly Cuddy Blacks as well, because um, they're just really there's nothing to do here with these prisoner pods, but they look awesome. And I think they'll be really cool once they're fully implemented and can be used. Um, so this this little housing right here, I, I mean, I'm not sure why it goes this far back, but uh, this would be where the, you know, kind of where the turret goes up and down. Um, back here, it looks like maybe some kind of storage area, but I don't have access to anything. Component housing, maybe. Um, again, there is another uh, type of airlock here. I don't want to fall out of my ship again. Okay, this time you'll get to see it. So that is the outside, folks. <laughs> I'm going to close that door and... And this closed. That's okay. I didn't realize they were both going to close. And we'll get in here and we will. Can we just seal airlock? Yep, we sure can. Okay. And a uh, reciprocating door here on the other side. Uh, same type of deal. Very symmetrical ship. Um, apparently, up here is where my quantum engine is because I think that's a YTAC XL1. And let's go ahead and move into the habitation and cockpit access section. Uh, just like all the other cutties, there's like an armor storage place, a weapon storage rack. There are two beds here for the pilot and co-pilot. Not much else to do up here besides the cockpit. And uh, there is a turret over here, which we'll, we'll get into that um, when we actually... Oh, we're not in an armistice zone. So yeah, we can go ahead and hop into the turret. I didn't think we'd be able to fire out of here. This is... This is the turret. There's the power on. And there we go. So you can see our turret moves here up and down side to side as we fire our ballistics. So, I mean, just like any other, you'd expect any turret to function, lock on the targets uh, and shoot them until they're dead. So, that is the turret function, guys. It's like any other standard turret. So I'm going to hop out of the turret and we are going to head to the cockpit. Just like that. Now, uh, the co-pilot will hop in here, but I don't think there's anything necessarily that the co-pilot can do. I don't think they can do like a remote turret or anything like the Cuddy Red can do here. <laughs> It doesn't look like it. There's an exit. There, there's some good glass here. Um, I, I, you know, when missile operator mode gets in, um, I definitely think the, the, this co-pilot here is going to be crucial for being able to lock on and shoot missiles and all that stuff. But right now, there's nothing. There's nothing for co-pilots to do on this. Uh, I didn't even see that they had a radar. So to break my tradition here and I'm going to enter the pilot seat from the right. Okay. 
but we are in our ship now, uh, in the, in the, co uh, the, sorry, in the pilot seat. And we'll take around and look at the cockpit. Same displays as, as all the other Cutlasses, 2D radar, warning panel, six MFDs. Looking down, we have engine on, engine off. To the, we have our power on and off switch right here. Uh, to the left, open exterior, press to unlock. We have uh, our throttle here with my hand is not actually on it, but it is on the stick. Um, we have our exits, and that's about it. Now, notice the glass here, it's different, right? I have, I don't have any struts right here. And that's, I mean, that's significant when you are dogfighting. Um, so the Cutlass Blue, unlike the Cutlass Red and the regular Cutlass, has more glass in its cockpit for, for being able to see and dogfight better. And that's always a good thing. So without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and start up our engines. great sound <laughs> so our engines are fired up we will uh, go ahead and take off slowly okay we are up a little bit you see our engines are fired up let's go ahead and cycle that landing gear fits into the ship just nice and neat and on the front you can see it, it's almost like a, it's like 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 a cat's paws would be up there um, and then this ship, again, just like any other Cutlass, is a VTOL ship, so we will hit K to rotate our VTOL. And we will aim up a little bit and take off. Out of selling. I believe we are at a CM speed, which here at selling is 195 meters a second. And we'll, we'll go ahead and goose up the engines a little bit. We'll see how she flies around in the atmosphere because unlike the Cuddy Red, who's not meant to be a fighter or do a lot of uh, fighting, this ship is meant to do that, right? It's meant to be a, not just a mobile jail, but it's supposed to be a bounty hunting ship. It's made to do that. So you can see our yaw rate. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's just like, it reminds me of the Cutlass Black. It's almost identical to it. Um, why would you want this ship over a Cutlass Black? Well, if your bounties are supposed to be taken alive, then you definitely have a place to store them here. If you are a pacifist, or not necessarily a pacifist, but someone who, who doesn't believe in like capital punishment, definitely a ship for you. Capture your bounties, put them in jail here. Um, can't really see another use for this ship past what the Cutty Black has. So the Cutty Black... While it doesn't have jail cells, it has basically the same configuration. Now, I believe the Cuddy Blue has more missiles. I think it has two extra missile racks, but other than that, you know, the Cuddy Black has more has more storage, and it has... I mean, that's the big thing, right? It has way more storage for you. It has 46 SCU, and you can easily fit almost anything in there except, like, a rover and a ballista type thing. Uh, so the Cutty Black is really good for rock mining and things like that. It's a it's it's a good cargo ship. It's a great multi-role ship. It has the same gun layout. It has two size three guns and it has a turret on top, with I believe size ones or twos. So, you know, this ship is very similar to that. I used to own a Cutty Blue. I actually bought one real money, um, but I CCU'd it during uh, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo because I just didn't see myself needing it in the future i have an anvil hawk right and so not saying that this is better than anvil hawk but i just you know i buy i'll buy this in game basically is what i'm saying so uh i'm gonna shoot some of the weapons here you can see uh these are the lasers as we want to make sure i don't crash here we go let's head out into space a little bit guys okay so Jeez. Oh, okay, a little too much. There we go. So those are my attritions. And then those are my distortions. Yes, I have distortions on here because it kind of fits with the theme of this ship. One, it's red and blue, and those are kind of police siren colors. And two, uh, you know, if we're going to keep prisoners, we're, we're going to definitely want distortion weapons to knock out their shields and systems, even though that really isn't a thing right now. So... Let's go ahead and take this thing all the way up to maximum speed as we, I guess, make our way to Crusader. 
and uh, <laughs> it'll take a while to get there just like this. But uh, we're passing 1100, passing 1200, so it's faster than the Cuddy Red as well. So it looks like our max speed here is about 1210 or so. Um, I'm going to come back down to regular seam speed. Oh, that's why I did that, because the sun is bright. So while we're out here in space, let's take a look around the ship while we have some light on it. So I really like the paint scheme again, just like the cutty black, the cutty, the cutty red and the cutty blue, the, the dark blue with the whites and the grays just looks really, really good. Um, I God, I love these engines. They're probably my favorite or second favorite engine in the game. I really like the Hornets engines too, but you can see the, the color scheme that went into this ship uh, was very well done. Very subtle hints of yellows and, and a lot of blues, a lot of reds, a lot of, a lot of silvers. You can tell the ship is not nearly as weathered as the cutting red, although there is some signs of, of weathering and rust, but just not nearly as much. And maybe that's because it needs to project a better image. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just the artist just didn't want to do that, but it is a phenomenal looking ship. And I, I even though it's the Cylon uh, front end here, I really do like it. Um, good really good for dog fighting so let's go ahead and let's turn on the lights and sirens here no siren just lights there we go so just hit l for the lights uh as you would do for any other light and just like the cutty red lights up as an ambulance this guy lights up like a police ship um so very interesting on that uh i think it's really cool now what will this ship do for you it has a in, in addition to its weapons, and I guess one of the really big differences between this and the Cutty Black is this ship will um, stop you, stop other people from quantuming. That's a quantum interdiction device. And I believe it's tied in. I think I have to turn it on. I haven't used it in forever. Last time I used it, I got a crime stat. So you didn't see the Burke QD. You do have to turn it on here and it might be tied to, is it tied to a key? I don't, I don't 100% remember how to turn it on. Uh, we might be learning this together, by the way. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. So it's one of the settings up here. Quantum damper, activate a QED off. Now, I think that blue bar at the very top of the screen, this uh, this guy up here, I believe that's your quantum dampener. And what it'll do is it'll prevent people from actually uh, quantuming uh, away from you while you're trying to apprehend them. So let's go ahead and turn it on, see what happens. So it's on and we have this red field around us. That looks freaking amazing. Uh, let's see how far back it goes. So it's a little bubble. So it's very uh, similar to the ESD or the ESD. Oh my gosh, the EMP. I've, I've been at work too long today dealing with ESD devices. Uh, looks a lot like uh, EMP type of bubble. Um, I don't see anything necessarily draining from up here. So I'm not sure why necessarily that's there. Maybe that's just to indicate when you actually snare somebody or you prevent them from doing anything. Um, I do notice that this is up here in the corner and that's probably saying, hey, you can't quantum. That's the symbol for that. But I'm glad I'm not able to get a crime stat right now. That's uh, that's a good thing. So this is the quantum interdiction device or quantum, I'm sorry, the quantum enforcement device. The Mantis is the quantum interdiction device and that's what will actually stop people while they're quantuming. It'll pull them out of quantum. This quantum dampener will actually, um, it'll prevent people from quantuming from just regular flight. So we'll go ahead and deactivate that. I'm sure there's uh, some sort of a key or something like that that does that in the game. I just don't know because I don't fly this ship enough. I, I hardly see anybody ever fly this blues anymore. <laughs> um, so there we go. There is the tour of the of the Cutlass Blue um, 
from many, I guess, many different perspectives here. Uh, great looking ship, guys. Great looking ship. Um, I tell you what, let's let's do the uh, the thumbnail here on the fly because we did the the other uh, the the cutty red in a little different a little different way here. Here's the cutty blue. And we'll take a screenshot of that. So if you clicked on this video because of the thumbnail, you're watching us create the thumbnail live. All right. Anyway, guys, um, let's uh, let's go do some combat missions. What this ship was actually made to do. Um, oh, I got to go over some stats here before we are done with uh, talking about the Cuddy. Of course, it's Brian Drake Interplanetary. It is an interdiction role. It is a excuse me. It's a medium sized ship a crew of one to two. It has a cargo capacity of 12 SCU. Uh, it was flight ready in Alpha 3.9.1. I remember when the ship came in game because I bought it immediately. Um, the cost to buy this in game is 2,000. I'm sorry, 2 million 493,500 Alpha UVC. Uh, you can rent the ship for 49,870 uh, UVC or 24,935 rec per day. The claim time is uh, 14 minutes 51 seconds, so a little bit longer. Than the Cuddy, I believe, or the Cuddy Red. Uh, expedite time, two and a half minutes. Expedite fee, 3,700 off of EDC. The, uh, the pledge for this ship to buy the ship real money is 175 US dollars. Uh, it is time limited sales, so you'd have to pick this up at uh, probably Intergalactic Aerospace Expo or some other type of ship sale. Uh, it originally came out at $150, um, so it's up 25 bucks from that. It is 29 meters long, 21 meters at the beam, and 8 meters in height. Uh, SCM speed of 165, it says, and a max speed of 1114, and it weighs 226,700 kilograms. Just like the uh, the Cuddy Red, the ship is uh, size 2 components. Right, so uh, size two shield and a size two uh, coolers and a size two quantum drive and all that type of stuff. Um, let's see, it was introduced in lore 106 years ago, so pretty much around the same time as, as the Cutlass Red. Um, some of the features of the ship, uh, which we'll see in the brochure as well, a quantum damper, the fully integrated quantum damper, can instantly prevent nearby ships from activating or spooling their quantum drive. So I guess you can't even spool your drive. And the containment system is a custom Durasteel, Durasteel holding cells can safely restrain and transport up to 12 detainees at a time. I didn't see enough for 12. I saw enough for four. So maybe that's a typo or that's what it's supposed to be is 12. Uh, custom EVL, hull mounted emergency vehicle lighting flashes red and blue during pursuits and emergency situations, which is actually super cool and super immersive. Again, I'm not going to do the paints for this. I'll do that on the Cutlass Black. Um, but we do actually have a commercial for this when it first came out, and we will go over that after we do our first person dogfighting and our loadouts. Um, for this ship and uh, we'll do the brochure and then we'll, we'll get to the commercial and then we'll do some third person dogfighting and maybe we'll even do the quantum interdiction or I'm sorry the quantum dampening I can't I can't change the way I'm saying that apparently and uh, so so far thanks for watching guys stick with us here uh, let's go get into some trouble and I'll see y'all in just a few minutes a few minutes I'll see you all in just a few seconds if if it takes longer than that then I should be fired all right, guys, so we're well, we're here to test out the quantum interdiction, uh, the quantum enforcement device on the Cuddy Blue. I have Jawa here in the Drake Cutlass Black, and I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to turn on the QED. And so the QED is on and I'm going to go ahead and activate the quantum dampener. Joe, if you can see, I have this big uh, red field on the outside of me. Okay. Oh, yeah, I do. I see yep. it. So, uh -huh. okay. So why don't you line... Okay, so I have the marker that looks like quantum... It, it, like nobody can quantum. Oh, yeah. Right. I see that up in the marker. My bad. My bad. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see it. I see okay. it. Okay, so I right want hand. you to turn to your left and try to spool up to her L3 again. Nope. Won't even turn uh, it on says your QT jammed. 
QT jammed. It says QT jammed. Okay. Yep. And that's and that said on my screen, quantum travel calibration started by Jawa. But right. it probably just means that you're you're, you're spooled up. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm in, I'm gonna take the field off. Are you mm -hmm. still pointed towards her L3? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna deactivate the field. And Okay, I can quantum now. Um, will it let you? Yep. Because I still have a oh, right now. So you should be able to fully spool up now. I'm already spooled. Okay. Um let's see if this will work again. Quantum dampener active. Nope. Now it says no. System jammed. Yep. Okay, go ahead and fly towards it and tell and then tell me your range. I guess I'll tell you my range. Oh, okay. 429. It's until you're able to quantum. Yeah, 33189 427. So it's, it's it won't let you do it right now. Nope. Okay. 25. No, uh, from me. Oh, okay, distance from 24. me. Distance from me. Okay. okay. So, uh let me so, turn around and see you. So you're about you were about 6000 when you said it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it wouldn't let you do it. So, guys, that's yep. the range uh, right now. Active field about six thousand meters, uh, preventing quantum. Um, Will it pull me out of quantum if I'm this far away? You turn that on, and I aim at say. So I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's test yellow. that out. Okay. I'm gonna deactivate the damper. Okay. Okay, so we're 136,000 kilometers away. Correct. I'm going to turn on my damper. And activate it. It's saying QED off. Okay, QED. <laughs> QED on. Okay, Q, Q damper activate. Let me get the full, let me get my little uh, notification. Okay, go ahead and head towards Q uh, her L3, and we'll see if it pulls okay. you out. All right, spooling. Celebrating. Ready. Here it goes. Are you getting the warning? It's a beep, beep, beep. Not yet. Not yet. Nope. It just flew right by you. Yeah, I saw you go right past me. Yep. So, the, I mean, this isn't the Mantis, right? The Mantis right. actually pulls you out of quantum. Right. This is this is the. Uh, oh, you can't get away. It's the quantum yep. enforcement device. Yes, you can't get away. So, right. all right, folks. Well, thanks. Uh, now you know how that works, and it does indeed work. So, thanks for uh, watching this segment. All right, guys. So we are headed towards our target here. Let me grab my uh, my sticks here and let's uh, let's fight this guy. This is a very high risk target mission. Um, I do have a bunch of size three missiles that apparently there we go. Now they're locking on. This is an Anvil Hurricane. So what? We only got one at him. Oh, and it took him out. Maybe that was more than one. I didn't even get to use my claw. Okay, there's other guys. Okay. I said I didn't even really get to shoot him. Okay, let's shoot this guy. Remember, I had distortions on. And it is an Aegis Gladius Valiant. Not that they're going to quantum away or anything. I'm just trying to test the power system here. Because I never use this ship. So I should be taking down these shields quite a bit. And then my attrition should be going in there for the kill. This would probably work really better on bigger ships, you know. The size three uh, distortion repeaters. Fighters are a little harder to nail down. But you see, he has like no shields right now. Come on, attritions. Get in there and get this guy. There we go. Okay. So, there we go. Okay, this guy, it's uh, just a, it's an F8 Hornet. Uh, I'll pull out my ar arresters, I guess, and I'll try to get a missile on him. See if I can take down his shields at all. Come on. Oh, he 
he's flying too close to me. Let's go past him here, folks. This is a strategy I use for missiles all the time if I can, if I'm fast enough. And lock. There we go. Ooh, there we go. Oh, I shot like five missiles at this guy. Yeah, he, sh he should be dead right now. But apparently not, and but he is now. So, <laughs> and our quantum field is still going. So, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to shut it off. There we go. Okay, and that's it's a little bit noisy. So, there you go, folks. Uh, there's a oh, it looks like an almost intact hornet. Um, oh, there. Oh, see now it's now it's like fading in and out. Oh, there's the fire. Okay, so. That's kind of a very strange type of damage model on that guy. Um, looks more patterned than it does damage. Um, but that's that's just a little weird. There's no pilot in the cockpit, so I guess he's dead. Um, see, what would be nice is just to you know, use my distortions. It looks like my distortions are actually doing electrical damage. See that there? If I can do that and then grab the guy and then stick him into my hold uh, and transport him over here to PO or something for jail, that'd be pretty cool. I can't wait till that game plays in. If it does, I might even go buy a Cutty Blue. But anyway, guys, that is first person combat with Cutlass Blue. It handled a very high risk target mission very easily. I know there's no Valkyrie here. Uh, that would have been fun to wear down with these size three uh, distortions, but the Cuddy Blue, the Cuddy Blue in battle, it, it does a very great job. Uh, a very great job. It does a very good job on uh, what it does. And I hope you guys uh, are enjoying the video so far. I certainly am. And let's head on over to the loadout for the Cuddy Blue, and then we'll keep on trucking after that. Thanks for watching. All right, folks. So here we are at the Drake Cutlass Blue uh, loadout section here. Um, and the role here is a medium fighter, medium freight. Uh, I'm not sure I would agree with medium freight, uh, even though it is carrying prisoners. Uh, career is multi-role. Ship size is three. Uh, whole hit points, 21,120. Uh, good shield, or I'm sorry, good whole hit points here. Um, our speed here, 198 SCM, 1210 uh, afterburner. Pretty much the same pitch roll, ya. Yeah. It's the Cuddy Red. I mean, it's the same thing and the same cargo capacity, but it is significantly more expensive at 2.493 million off EBC. You can pick it up at the New Deal Shipyard in Lordville. Um, let's talk about weapons, not turrets yet, just regular weapons. We are at two. Everything's gimbaled size two right here. We're going to get rid of that. But it comes stock with XJ2. Uh, uh, distortion repeaters, which I agree with. And then it has ballistic Gatlings on here, which is actually not a bad loadout uh, as it is. But I like to fly fixed uh, if I if I can. Um, so we'll, we'll do a full fixed loadout here. The loadout I had in the video was two Mantis GT220s and two DR model XJ3. Actually, I didn't have that. I, instead of 220s, I had uh, Attrition 3s on here. I think you could go either way, but doing this type of build ensures that you, you'll be able to just recharge your, your weapons without having to run out of ammo. That pops our damage up to 2315 with 487 alpha damage. Now, these, these stats are inflated because it thinks the distortions actually do damage, which they don't. Uh, but they do take down shields really quick, as you saw in the video. Um, on the turret, the manned turret, uh, it has... Uh, right now, it, it is size three guns, and there's two Panther 337s. Because there's no ballistics on here, I would throw GT 220s up there, bumping up our DPS to 960 with 58 alpha damage. Uh, as far as missiles go, now the missiles I had on there, I changed everything over to a size three, which I would recommend because this thing holds quite a few missiles. I believe it holds, um, it'll hold 12 size three missiles, which is a lot. Uh, meaning it'll hold 24 size twos if you want to go that route. Um, but what I loaded on there was a mix of Thunderbolt threes 
and uh, Arrestor 3s, which is a mix of EM and uh, cross section. So that's what that's what that is. The EMP, it is a size one Burke uh, quantum interdiction thing here. Quantum, yeah. Um, it's the only thing you can put on. So there you go. And the radius is 20,000 meters, it looks like, for the Burke uh, quantum interdiction device. I don't, can I put up the stats? There we go. Jammer, so the jammer range is 2,000 meters, which is actually really, really small. Um, the jammer green zone is 4,000 meters. I don't know what any of this means. Uh, <laughs> the interdiction range, 20,000 meters, and the interdiction green zone, 3,000. So it looks like it'll actually... So, so this is telling me the interdiction range that it'll actually pull people out of quantum up to 20,000 meters away. But if you're 30,000 meters away, you're good. It'll prevent people from quantuming if they're within 2,000 meters, but if they're at 4,000 meters, you can quantum away just fine. That's not a great range. Um, I think it should be five times that, personally. I think we should have a 10,000 meter jammer range, you know, because you can fly away from people really quickly. So, anyway, it says charge time 30 seconds, activation time three. I couldn't get it to activate. I just kind of had it on. I don't know what else to do. I was hitting the right mouse button. So maybe I was doing something wrong. I don't know. If you know, if you know what I was doing wrong, please say so in the comments. I'd love to learn this. Um, the disperse time is five seconds. It says discharge time fifteen seconds. It didn't it? It shouldn't work like an EMP to me. It should be a constant field that that just keeps on going. So if it works like an EMP, I think that's dumb because you don't necessarily know when someone's trying to quantum away. And I wouldn't want it to only work for fifteen seconds or something like five seconds. That wouldn't do me any good. So. Yeah, I think it should just be an active field until you shoot that guy down. Um, and it should only work on ships of a certain mass as well. Um, anyway, moving on to components. Shields, size 2. Everything under here, and we have industrial grade 3 for shields. Everything is grade C um, for components. We're going to change our shields out to a rampart. Uh, highest hit point pool. You could go with FR-76. I mentioned with the cutting red, but uh, Sukaran would probably be the best thing. But I recommend the red part. Um, the power plant size two, um, I would go with a standard JS400. The coolers, I would go with my standard snowpack. Now, it comes with a grapple, which is a horrible cooler uh, at 3720k. The, the cutting red's way better. Um, so, definitely upgrade these coolers. Uh, the quantum drive, it's a Bolon Great Industrial C, so it, it'll go really far without needing gas. But it also takes you 13 minutes to go from PO to Microtech. So as far as Stanton goes, I recommend an XL1, a Jaeger, or a Crossfield um, until we get Pyro in there. And so there you go, folks. Uh, if we look at our, our power here, we're just under half, which is right where we need to be. Uh, cooling, we got a ton of room. The EM and the IR are very high, 68,000, 15,000. You're not going to hide from anybody with the ship uh, in this configuration. So that is the loadout for the Drake Cutlass Blue, uh, the interdiction slash fighter slash bounty hunter slash jail ship. All right, guys, we're here at the brochure from RSI for uh, the Cutlass Blue and the Cutlass Red by Drake Interplanetary. We are uh, going to look at the brochure, but we are not going to look at the Cutlass uh, Black, which is in here. We'll do that on the next video uh, that comes out. So without further ado, let's let's dive into it. United by Independence. So we can see the Cutty Red on top, the Cutty Blue, which is not the right colors. It's more white than it is blue uh, with a different style cockpit and stuff, different glass. And then there's the Cutty Black um, over there on the bottom. That is the Cuddy Black, and I would love to have this skin with a little bit of uh, stuff going on in here, um, but I still don't have my pirate skin, CIG. Where is my black pirate skin? Uh, ready for anything, the Cuddy Red, the Cuddy Blue. Um, notice these do look uh, 
way different than what they look like in game. They This section here is very rounded uh, in the middle there, and it's it's a lot more square in the ship. So uh, that would have been an interesting design, but the engines look the same and uh, the top fuselage pretty much looks the same as well. Uh, afraid of nothing <laughs> with our cutties up here. Um, pretty cool concept art here. Okay, we're going to skip the Cutlass Black. Um, okay, the Cutlass Blue. The base stats on the Cutty Blue. It's a police ship by Drake. Uh, Max Crew, it says of three. Um, I can see on here on the, the, the concept art where there's definitely room for more cells here and less room necessarily for people and bunks. So I'm not sure if this is going to get a rework or or not, or how this is going to work. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see when that's done. Now, of course, all this, all these statistics on here are old. Um, they don't work with current systems, you know, like Max Shield and the cooling system is the Drake Ice Blade Radiator. That, you know, that's that's not a thing. Uh, there's no Spider 2 launchers or anything like that. Um, so just take a lot of this with a grain of salt. Uh, it still has a cargo capacity of 30 when it's actually 12. The mass is wrong, you know, stuff like that. So, but it is a really cool picture of the original concept of the Cutlass Blue. Take a stand. Some things are worth fighting for. Plain and simple. When those moments come, you need to know that whatever challenges you face, you'll be able to pass the test with guts, grit, and grace under pressure. And a ship that can handle whatever you throw at it. The Cutlass Blue has a tough, hands-on utility, advanced electronics, Durasteel holding cells, lethal armaments like the Nova Spider 2 missiles, which are not a real thing, superb comfort, and long-run durability. All that adds up to the blue being known as known the verse over as the vehicle of choice for those who protect and serve and a ship that's right for your fleet. So really cool concept art here of, of a lot of cells here, but the ship just isn't this big. Uh, it's smaller than this. So right now we have four cells. Uh, it'd be interesting if we could fit more cells in there, though. I think there's definitely room. Some more pictures of the cutting blue. Uh, original concept, uh, again, a lot more rounded on the fuselage, whereas, whereas that's where I think they're putting those cells. Uh, it's weird. It's kind of like a circle and then a triangle attached to engines with forward wings and rear. It's it's very, it's a very different design, uh, but I like it. Uh, it also has four landing gear in these pictures, if you see this, which I think would look really cool. It's a lot more like a insect here. Um, instead, now we have like we still have technically four landing gear, but the front two are attached. So it's more like a tripod. The Cutlass Red, uh, the Roll Search and Rescue. Uh, again, this thing is totally different. I think it was built to have more space, built to have bunk beds. Um, it looks like it's supposed to have four medical beds instead of just the two that it has. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I really am enjoying this concept type of art because this is definitely not what we have now. Um, and I like what we have now. I think I would actually like this better. I don't really care if the engines are VTOL or not, especially the main engines. I think they should have some VTOL thrusters like this picture, but uh, yeah, what a different uh, look here on, on the cutting back. A first responder needs a responsive ride. The difference of a few minutes can have a profound impact on the lives of people. That's why when faced with an emergency, any emergency or rescue situation, you need a ship you can depend upon to get you where you need to be, regardless of the location or the challenge you face. A ship that has advanced scanners like the NAV E7 Long Range and, de and dependable medical facilities like the Cutting Edge Tech provided by Autodoc, a ship like the Cutlass Red. The red delivers the performance and reliability you need to control any rescue situation quickly with authority and confidence. I kind of like those med beds. and uh, it's, it's it's weird that we don't have them, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. At least we do have two uh, auto dock beds and two other like recovery beds. 
some more pictures of the cutty red um again very much like the cutty blue and the older concept of the the drake cutlasses and then we have some uh, some comparison stats here for the different ships these are so out of date i don't even really want to go over them to be honest and there we go um we care about you when flying your drake interplanetary cutlass so be sure to pilot safely respectively within the limits of the law and your abilities yeah okay drake Always wear a flight suit with proper sealing and insist your passengers do too. Never pilot while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. It's okay to run drugs. Just don't take drugs while you're flying. The, uh, okay, there's more like propaganda here about Drake and their logos and stuff. And look, Drake Interplanetary, 329 Dreg Street, uh, Newcastle, Borea Magnus, which is where Drake, you know, builds their stuff. And the founder of Drake, Jan Dreg, uh, it's, it's awesome that she has her own street there. So with that, that is the Drake uh, brochure for the Cutlass Red and the Cutlass Blue. And we'll go over it again when we do the Cutlass Black video, guys. Um, enjoy what's next, which should be the commercial uh, for the Cutty Blue. We'll get into some dogfighting and we'll wrap the video up. Thanks for sticking with us so far. In a dangerous galaxy, who can you trust to watch your back? Drake's Cutlass Blue lets you take the law into your own hands. With all the attitude you expect from a Cutlass. Formidable suppression options offering a range of lethality, supercharged thrusters, plus an integrated quantum dampener and onboard containment system. The Cutlass Blue, bad news for the bad guys. Only from Drake.
everybody. All right. So this is Fist, and I I, uh, I had a great time doing this video. I hope, I hope you enjoyed the content here. Um, I just want to say to everybody, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a lot about the Cutlass Red and the Cutlass Blue and these fantastic ships by Drake Interplanetary. I'm having a good time doing the Drake playlist here. It's uh, it's it's always fun to fly around Cutlasses. Uh, they are. They are great ships. Um, but more importantly, I want to say thank you for watching our video. Um, if you haven't already, please consider uh, liking and subscribing to uh, our channel here. I, if we have earned your, uh, I guess, your viewership and you want to learn more, we have tons of playlists out there on uh, different, uh, different ship types. We have an Anvil, we have an Aegis, uh, we have Origin. I'm just getting into Drake. That guy likes to interrupt. Um, <laughs> we have all kinds of different stuff, and we have some live streams up there. Uh, Java does a phenomenal job at doing a tour of the Stanton system, and he's going to do some more vehicle, uh, vehicle videos coming up soon. He's He does a lot of mining stuff. So there's plenty of content on here, guys. If you are interested in learning uh, more about the game and... Um, just in general, help us support us. I appreciate your viewership. I want to have a shout out to our patrons uh, over on Patreon. Thank you guys for helping support the channel so much. And uh, there's not enough words that I that I can say to, to express how thankful Joe and I are. And for you guys here on YouTube, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time in the video about the Cutty Black. So until then, stay safe and... Uh, Good night, Stanton.